Hello, my name's Brandon Nagley. Um, I've released prophetic dreams of mine in the past, and I'm actually going to release two new ones. Um, the first new one I had about a month ago. Um, the other new one I had about a week ago. And I got more prophetic um, dreams of my own um, on this YouTube channel. So if you want to check those out, you can look at those. But um, it's been really on my heart lately for the first dream I had a month ago and I really want to speak about it to anybody listening and anybody knowing about the events going on right now around the world and the chaos and the stuff's happening that matches biblical gospel. Um, I'd like to release this new video of mine to explain to you my two new prophetic dreams. And my first dream is this. Um, I was, I don't remember exactly where I was at. It was just like, um, I couldn't remember the place at all where I was at, but I do remember in my dream that there was a voice speaking to me, and the voice that I knew to be speaking to me, um, I felt was either an angel, um, I'm leaning more towards it was Christ speaking to me, I've had another dream of seeing Christ, I walked into this huge tree, I saw Christ looking down at me with his glowing face, his white beard, his white hair about to hear. Um, and just be, I couldn't see his face, but beautiful light shining out of his face. So that's a dream um, not too long ago I had of Christ back then. But I knew this voice. And, you know, if you ever hear about near-death experiences, which I, I hate the term near-death experience because these people are actually brain and heart dead. that are talking about when they die and they come back or they go to hell and they, they see Christ and they get saved by Christ out of hell or they meet Christ in heaven or they meet him in the tunnel or they meet his angels and they'll tell you about these real experiences that many want to deny. But every single one of these people that talk about hearing Christ in their dreams or speaking to them in the dreams and visions or in death, they speak about Christ having an authoritative voice. Um, in my dream, the man had, had the authoritative voice as they all say which in my dream in the past, seeing Christ look down at me through this tree at this dark stairway, he was looking down at me, um, with, like I said, with the glowing face. He didn't say nothing. He didn't speak in that dream. You can look at that. That's in one of my prophetic dreams I've had in, in one of the other videos. But this figure in my first dream I had, it was about 30 days ago, and if you come to the point of yesterday, you know, um, I'll get to that in a second. But in my dream, um, what happened was is that I heard this voice. I couldn't really make out what the voice was saying, but I knew it was authoritative. And with the voice, I remember people talk about in death, they talk about you don't have to speak with your lips. You don't have to speak with your mouth. There are hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of accounts of people talking about they see Christ speaking to, to, to them, but they talk about thought-to-thought -thought talk, thought-to-thought -thought process, telepathy. They talk about that way of speaking. Not, you, you, don't, you don't have to use your lips and mouth. You can, they talk about in death, but they said usually they don't. They speak thought-to-thought -thought because you're in the spirit. You're no longer in the physical. So in my dream, I, remember, I can remember hearing my thoughts speaking to this authoritative figure, which I believe was Christ. And I remember asking him, um, how long, I, I don't remember which is either. I told my girlfriend Jane this. I told my mother this. I remember asking the voice, I go, how long either do I got left or how long do we got left? Or how long is left? It's one of those. And I remember the voice saying something. I couldn't make out what the voice said. But I do remember as if it was a calendar in front of me. He had given me two numbers. The numbers were 30. 30. That was the number, 30. And I remember distinctly asking, how long do I got left? Like, I remind you, I wasn't speaking with my mouth. I could hear my thoughts speaking to the authoritative figure, which I believe was Christ. As many will say, Christ's voice is authoritative. You will know it's him. And I was, I was thinking at first, could this be an angel? But then I said, no, this is completely Christ speaking to me. Um, but the figure put in front of me a number, and the number was 30. Ironically, there's this thing going around all over the Internet. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to set any dates, okay? I'm not a date setter. 
The Bible doesn't, and the Gospel doesn't want us to be a date setter. Only God knows the time and the hour that Christ will call up His people. Only God knows the time and the hour of the day of judgment. But here's the fact that others don't talk about. Even Christians won't even talk about this. They'll sway away from this truth. It says, yes, truthfully, you won't know the time and the hour. But my friends, it says you will know even when it's at the doors. By the signs, by the sun, the moon, and the stars, you will know when it's at the door, when it's knocking. And all the signs are there by the astronomical signs, by the chaos happening right now, by all the stuff in our politics that's corrupt happening right now, by all the stuff with Obama happening right now, with the world gathering of one world unity happening right now, with all the people and dreams and visions of people seeing the elections being canceled, seeing Obama take his third term, as we already know he is the Antichrist. Some will say it's Pope Francis. But that would make no sense, being Pope Francis is the religious leader, as some want to put out, oh, he's the Antichrist. No, that's if you just take a look. It talks about in Joel 2.28, in the book of Joel 2.28, all the way till the end, it says, old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall have visions. And it talks about your young sons and daughters shall prophesy, which is happening right now. They're teaching others of their dreams. They're prophesying to you of their dreams. And their vision is happening right now all across the globe. And what many don't talk about is why are the Muslims by massive numbers converting over to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Anointed One, Jesus the Messiah? Why are they converting, especially refugees, all over refugee camps? Well, if you look up the articles, you will see Muslims are seeing Christ by thousands in dreams and visions. Just as Joel 2.28 said that God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, okay, which is happening now, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and it goes the other way around, because I've had dreams, as I'm speaking to you now of my dream. So as I'm saying, the first number I got in a dream, I got the number 30, and I remember Christ speaking to me in the, in the dream, I couldn't make out what he was speaking to me. But I knew this number 30, as I said, I asked him, thought the thought process, how long do I got left or how long is left? And I got the number 30 right in front of me. And as I was saying, there's a thing going on all over the internet. I never even knew about this until I typed in the number 30. And there's this thing popping up all over online called August 30th, 2016. That actually a, a pastor that I well respect. Many will say he's false and all this and that. But actually he speaks the truth on what the gospel preaches. John Hagee brought up something about August 30th, 2016. About something about the Antichrist revealing himself. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. Um, I'm not setting any dates. So I don't want this to be taken out of context. I just thought that was quite ironic that my number 30, how that's been brought up in the search results all over Google, have came to, came to August 30th by the dozen. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, by the way, everything's looking with these elections. I will 100% tell you they will be canceled before the end of the year. I'm not going to date set. Here's another weird thing. I'm going to throw in a few facts. My birthday is September 23rd, 1988. I'm 27 years old. Um, ever since the last few years, since I've been about maybe 14 or 15, for years I would see the numbers 923 on the clock. God doesn't just send you signs through dreams and visions or even to people by the thousands in death. He gives you it by the numbers. For example, I put this in one of my other videos. Um... I had actually prophesied to my mother something that would happen to my mom and dad before it ever occurred. I was working at the store, Family Dollar, um, not too far away from here, and what happened to me was I was on the cash register daily. And people say, oh, that, this is a joke, you know, this is a joke thing. No, this is not a joke. I kept getting the numbers 31 and 13 in tax form. 31 and 13. It would be like a dollar 31. Ten dollars 13 cents. 2.31, 20, 13 cents. And I knew the two last numbers of that tax form I kept getting while I was working on the cash register. 31 and 13, my spirit told me it had something to do with my father or both of my parents. <laughs> um, 
I had my mother to back me up on that. I ended up telling her a month in advance. One day I came out of work. Um, my mother picked me up from work. She had, you know, said, how was your day? I told her, I keep seeing these numbers, 31 and 13, the last few days. Mom, I said, something's going to happen to you and my father. Or just my father alone. I wasn't sure which. But what ends up happening on the day of April... I believe it was 31st, it was my dad's first heart attack. He ended up having a heart attack. And by the way, where the numbers 31 and 13 come in at, my father was born on 8-13-56. 8-13-56. He was born on August 13th, okay? That's where the number 13 comes at. My mother, and her birthday is July 31st. July 31st, so that's where the numbers come in at, 31-13. My mom's birthday the 31st, 13, my father's birthday. So I came out of work one day and told my mother and father, something is going to happen to you. I keep getting these numbers in tax form. These are not just regular numbers. There's no way these numbers can add up to 31 and 13 when the tax was supposed to be 10 to 15 cents after the end of each dollar. God kept giving these signs. I had prophesied it to my mother a month in advance. I don't consider myself a prophet. I'm just considering these truths that I have back up to prove. And what, it, as I said, what ended up happening, um, the first time my father had a heart attack, not too much longer after the dream I had, and then a month after that, my father had multiple heart attacks, not too long ago in the month of May. He had four heart attacks where he almost died, and luckily both times, by the grace of God, God saved him. But he used me both times to be able to know, how, to know what to do by giving him the aspirin both times he had the heart attack and praying for him at the moment, holding his hand while he's having a heart attack, holding his hand while he's dying. And come to find out, the doctor said his heart was 96, or sorry, 99.65% blocked. So he almost died both times, and he ended up getting a stent in his leg. The next part of that is my mother, where the calamity comes in with her, she ends up crashing her van. She flipped it over not too long after my dad had his second heart attack, and now she's dealing with the financial consequences of that. Which she also had a dream of Christ coming to her and picking her up, holding her as she looked into his aquamarine eyes, as they'll say in heaven, as all these paintings show Christ with brown eyes. No, she saw him with green turquoise eyes, as many will see him in death or also see him in the other form, how Revelation describes him with fiery eyes. So this is a reality, is the prophecies that I've been getting and what's been really going on. Um, my second dream I'm going to explain to you. As I said, the first dream I'm not going to date said. I just remember asking Christ as he spoke to me, and I don't remember what he said to me. I remember how long do we got left or how long do I got left. And I got the number 30 right in front of my eyes. There's no missing it. There's no missing who's the vo who the voice was. Everybody that dies and comes back or everybody that has dreams and visions and makes discernment out who Christ is and knows who he is tells you his voice is authoritative. There's nothing you can miss about it. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible that speaks about the voice of God is as many waters. Many waters. That's how many will describe it in death. How is voice will echo like waters when he speaks to you as if his voice is bouncing off the ocean coming to you. That's how beautiful and strong and powerful our Lord is for some that want to deny that fact. Um, my second dream I'm actually going to make real quick because we're already on 13 minutes and 54 seconds. I'm going to make this a quick one. Uh, my second dream was really weird. It was uh, The second half of the dream made no sense, but the first part of the second dream did. <laughs> my second dream happened to be with one of my favorite people who know the gospel and know about the fallen angels who's been speaking about it and putting out the information. He was in my dream. His name is L.A. Marzulli, ironically in my dream, and I'm going to mention the second dream right now. In my second dream, I was with Mr. Marzulli. I remember being at some high school or big type campus or whatever, and I remember me and Mr. Marzulli being outside of the school, and I remember the military coming to the school, giving them a heads up that they're going to be doing some type of massive thing the next day. Now, everybody's having these dreams of, uh, you know, the chaos coming up and, you know, uh, 
the Black Lives Matter tweets have came out talking about they are going to disrupt the Clinton and the Trump rallies to usher in martial law for Obama. Nobody knows about that type in uh, Black Lives Matter tweets hacked, but yet the Black Lives Matter leader will come out and say, well, this don't exist even on his own page. Well, the fact is it does exist. This is a real message. <laughs> There's a lot of bad things going on right now, and they're doing anything all across the false media mainstream to keep Obama in power. They're doing every everything in government to bring in a United Nations global police force where they will enforce taking away your guns. When martial law hits, they will take away guns. They will enact a complete global thing where they already have United Nations troops here. A lot of people don't know that. Um, somebody in my family is actually in the military. They're very high up. I'm not going to say who. But they've been doing a lot of the military drills around the country so they know what's going on. They won't tell my family about it or me. But I make it well aware to my loved one that you better wake up and you better try to get away from this as far as you can. But this person's already a colonel now in the Army, so it's it's kind of hard for me to get that across to them, even though all the military is leaking out the information you need to know. Um, as I said, my second dream was with L.A. Marzulli, with what happened here in the dream was... Me and L.A. Marzulli, as I said, if you look him up, he's a very good biblical teacher. He knows a lot about Bible prophecy and a lot about the fallen angels, a lot about the giants. A man I well respect. He was with me. We were outside the school in my second dream. And as being outside the school, by the way, I do apologize for getting off track. I have so much information in my head. I have more than a library can hold, to be honest with you, um, prophetic-wise. Um, studying all the great pastors over since I've been 13 years old, really since the time of 9-11. I've been awoke to what's going on. I've been studying, studying to what's going on, matching news to the gospel, gospel to the news, matching every little thing up and not including all my prophetic dreams and others, dreams and visions and in death. But anyway, I'll just get to it really quick since we're on we're running late here on time for everybody. And I know I personally don't like to watch too many long videos, but they're, they're always good to see. <laughs> In the second dream, I was with L.A. Marzulli outside the school. And outside the school, we saw the military come to the school. They were all dressed in riot gear, you know, how you see the United Nations dressed with helmet shields and stuff. And they all came to school, and they told them, as me and L.A. were outside the school watching this military pull up to the school. They told the school, get ready, something big's coming to happen tomorrow. We're going to be doing some type of massive drill or training or whatever. And I remember the next part of my dream, I remember seeing myself on a bus, a school bus with L.A. Marzulli. And on the bus, I saw myself with him with a bunch of people. And I knew, I saw the military start rushing in and telling people they were all outside the school. There was hundreds, hundreds of people outside the school and even inside. They were telling them, get back in. They were locking these people up in the school. They were locking them away for this big, massive thing that was taking place. And I, I had known in my dream and my spirit what it was in reality. It was martial law hitting. It was them detaining people, keeping them in the school, not letting them walk away from the school. Me and L.A. Marzulli, L.A. Marzulli was the bus driver on this bus, and there was a bunch of people on this bus. We packed the bus, and I was right next to the right seat on the right in front of him. He was, well, right next to him as he was driving. I remember yelling at L.A. Marzulli. I said, go, go, go. We got to go, L.A. We got to go. Get out of here. <coughs> Excuse me, and. I remember saying, it's happening. We got to go now. L.A. started, I remember L.A. Marzulli started driving off real fast in the bus. We started driving. And the scene turned to nighttime. And I remember, it's like small parts I can't remember, but I do remember seeing this car in front of me, or, or an SUV. And there was a driver in the car. And this part comes in with the rapture. Okay, this like many are having rapture dreams. This just adds into now a rapture part for one of my dreams. I was driving with L.A. Marzulli on a bus, and this woman was standing up for joy. Her hands were going like this, real wild. She was frantic, and she was like standing up through the sunroof or whatever. Or maybe her body was just sticking out of this SUV, and I just remember her being frantic 
and seeing her, as the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, Christ shall call us up. And as people are dreaming by the thousands and dozens, seeing their own selves getting caught up in the clouds, in the twinkle of, twinkling of an eye, meaning, um, I can't remember so-and-so force of a second, like that. As soon as your eye blinks, you go up. When Christ says, come up hither, come up here, it's time to go. And it's going to be so quick, it's going to be like that. As soon as you blink your eyes, you're going to be up if you're saved and gone, which I pray you are. So I just saw this woman. I remember her being frantic in this SUV, putting her hands up and just like that. I saw her body just whoop, like that, up through the up through the vehicle, just like that. And I knew that was the rapture that just occurred. And, you know, a lot of people, they have dreams of being raptured, and then they also have dreams at the same time, too, of being left behind. They can have the dreams of being raptured and left behind for God to show you, <laughs> you know, hey, get ready, which God has been telling me as the dream I had before with, with Christ looking down at me through this huge tree. I knew what the dream meant. He didn't say nothing. He didn't have to say nothing. Um, it just meant to be ready, get ready, and that's what I've been trying to do lately. I've, I've been off track lately. But I'm really I'm praying hard to get back on track and, and be ready for the Lord as I pray others can get ready and for those who don't know Christ that they may come to Him and accept Him as Lord and Savior. Um, I just remember, as I said, the lady disappearing out of the SUV. I saw her shoot up out of the SUV and then it switched over. Me and L.A. Marzulli were driving on the highway. We came up to some road and it came to like a checkpoint and the road had broken off. We couldn't go no farther. And then I saw uh, us driving the next morning. We were driving on a highway, and I saw this huge statue on the highway. It was like a statue you see down in South America. It was that big, the South American statue of Jesus Christ. It looked like that, but it wasn't that same statue. But it, it was just a figure of Jesus Christ, a statue that came down on the highway, and the head broke off as if like a quake or something major had knocked this huge statue of Christ down. And it the statue ended up breaking the head off right in front of me and L.A. Marzulli on this bus. So that was another sign showing Christ, you know. Um, and then it, it got to some other parts in the dream that were very insignificant, um, really stupid to be honest with you, but that was my second part of the dream. The second dream I had um, where I just spoke about my prophetic stuff. So I pray that anybody that isn't saved in Christ, I'm going to let you know right now. Um, I'm not date setting. I'm not putting any dates on it, um, as we should not do as Christians. But what I will tell you is the time is short. The time is now. Um, judgment is coming, not just to America, but worldwide. We're already seeing everything take place as it is. And I can tell you right now, 100%, you will not have any more presidents. This has been well known throughout the ages. If you look at every culture throughout history, they all said their, quote, Messiah or their leader would return between 2012 and 2016. There's many prophecies on that I spoke through in my other videos. Um, but the time is short. That means the... Antichrist will soon make himself known to the world, which I already know who he is. There's no guessing that. There's no questioning. That also means soon Christ will call up his people. Some will call this a joke. Some will laugh at it. Some will mock it. But all the